Welcome, Housing Development Fund uh, participants. We are right here in Kibbutz Gonen, uh, overlooking the Hula Valley, behind us the Golan Heights. And we are here with Yair Sheinberg, a member of the kibbutz. We're going to talk to him a little bit about the uh, kibbutz itself and about the contribution, your contribution, our contribution to the community. So Yair, my um, first question to you is tell us a little bit about the kibbutz itself, when it was founded, and what do you do here? Well, Kibbutz Gonen was founded um, about 65, no, a little bit more, 1953, to make a long story short. It was uh, uh, founded by soldiers, by Nachal soldiers, uh, that uh, decided to uh, settle here because it was right by the Syrian border, okay? The year was 1953, the Syrians sat right behind you, about two meters or 200 meters away, and... Um, the reason they chose this place and they chose to name it Gonen is because Gonen means to defend, to protect, okay? And uh, the, the idea was that wherever you s settle, you set the, the, you know, the limits, the borders of uh, the newborn country. That's, that's why they came here, okay? And um, they based their living mostly on, on agriculture back then. Now things are a little bit different. <laughs> There's about 400 people living here right now, but as you can see, it's changing rapidly. Um, more and more new people are coming, so it's, it's not final, 400, okay? Hopefully. And uh, what do we do? Uh, kibbutz, uh, kibbutz life has changed dramatically during the last few decades, okay? The kibbutz is no longer uh, an agricultural settlement, I mean, also, but not only. And uh, now people have to take care of themselves. I mean, you have to find a job, whatever it is, uh, to make a living. The kibbutz won't provide for you anymore. Take me for an example. Uh, when I was away from the kibbutz, a long time, um, I practiced advertising, okay? So now I work in communication, okay? Uh, there are teachers, uh, high-tech workers, um, everything. Things may look nice here now, and you pick yourself one hell of a day to shoot, okay? It's beautiful, but uh, it, it hasn't always been that optimistic here, okay? I mean, a few years back, uh, kibbutz Gonen, like many, many other kibbutzim throughout the region and the country, uh, was facing a very hard crisis, both economically and socially. And um, people like myself left, okay? When I finished my uh, military service, this place looked hopeless, and there was no way I was coming back. Um, so I went uh, to seek my fortune elsewhere, ending up in a large Tel Aviv advertising agency, as far as it gets from kibbutz life, okay? Um, but about 10 or 15 years ago, things began to change back again. I mean, um, ideas like social justice and community and, and even mutual care and support uh, became trendy and relevant once again. And, you know, kibbutz had mastered those very values a few years back. So all he had to do was to take it out of deep storage and dust it up a little. And suddenly it was an option once again for me. Um, so here I am, back after 15 years away in the Tel Aviv diaspora, <laughs> um, building my life, building my home, creating my future. Projects like uh, the new uh, culinary institute that uh, is being planned and this new section of the kibbutz, you know, the infrastructures that are being built as we speak, as you can see, that changed the picture for me and for many others that made it possible for us to, to come back. Hi, so um, I told you that I came back here in order to uh, build a future for me and my family. That's true. But, uh, you know, I think it was uh, a wise old Chinese that once said that uh, you don't have a future if you forget your past, 
okay? And in order to get all those new people that are coming here now, in order to make Gonen a home for them too, I believe that uh, we need to get them in touch with the place history. Lucky for us, it's an inspiring one, okay? Let me take you back to the year 1967, okay? Six days war has just ended. The IDF stormed the Golan Heights behind you, pushing the Syrian border away, far enough. The young kibbutz members are going up the Golan Heights, touring the new land, and look what they found. Uh, a very special, unique uh, present that the, the Syrian forces left behind when they ran away. Check it out. This is a T-34 Soviet tank used by the Syrians in the wars, okay? Only instead of calling the Lost and Founds department, the kibbutz members take this tank back to the kibbutz with them. They replace the fearful cannon with this long hydraulic beam and use it to trim high branches in the poplar plantations of the kibbutz. So the first and only agricultural tank in the world is being born. And the biblical saying about turning swords to plowshares is becoming more real than ever. Okay, so this is it. And when I close my eyes, I, I can still see my dad driving this tank with, uh, with an American volunteer, trimming branches 15, 20 meters above him. And uh, now it's our turn. It's our turn to, uh, to pass the story on to our children, to uh, new people that are coming here. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to restore this tank and present it so we can tell this beautiful story again and again and again.